You're here, so you've tuned in to Joe's Music Something. Yo, hi, the way we be confusing, so let's learn something about me. Joe's Music Something. You learn about the notes, chords, beats, sound, we're almost getting out of bounds. It's Joe's Music Something. From Baltimore County Public Library. Hello, and welcome back to Joe's Music Something. I am the aforementioned Joe, and today's Music Something is the string instrument family. Oh no, those are rings, but nice try. A for effort. And ah, yes, you'll notice the crayons are back. We've come to a sort of agreement uh, through external arbitration. No hard feelings, though. Right, fellas? Bell. Legally, I must say. Okay. Anywho, while we can probably infer that string instruments use strings to make music, we press forth and continue our voyage into understanding them. Let's hop to it and start with where they came from. Like the dawn of most instruments, strings likewise come from more functional tools. In this instance, bows. Like this one, used for arrows. Uh, but not this kind. The other kind. That kind. We see this first depicted in art we find in the Trois Frères cave in France, painted 15,000 years ago. After that, a lot of things changed. Like we started making bricks, playing board games, and hanging out with cows and chickens for their stuff. Then around 3500 BCE, the Maykop people, a prehistoric culture found in modern-day Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Georgia, the country, decided it was time for a change and made their own string instruments. Followed shortly, and by shortly, I mean by about a thousand years, by the Ur people, who made these sweet-looking lyres in modern-day Iraq. Hmm. Guess they liked their cows quite a bit themselves. Maybe they liked to call it Music? Bell. Okay. Anyways, we've been innovating the instruments ever since, with stuff like picks and hammers and horses? I'll explain later. So, think back to my other instrument videos. How do we produce sound? Vibrations. But string instruments produce vibrations in three different ways. We bow them, we pluck them, or we hit them carefully. But before we start differentiating, let's talk about some similarities. Specifically, bowed and plucked instruments have a lot in common. So we'll start with the basics. Boo! Oh, come on. Okay. You know what? Let's take advantage of the bass here and do a tour of the instrument. I'm a little nervous though. I've uh, I've never given a tour before, but uh, I'll give it my best shot. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Still Joe, and I'll be your tour guide today. We're gonna look at this as a process, so stick with me, and you'll get it. The first thing that happens when playing a string instrument is that we cause one of these metal strings to vibrate. More on how later. If you'll all direct your attention upwards, you'll see the longer part of the instrument called the neck. Sometimes the strings are played open, while other times musicians will use their fingers to press the strings against the neck, making them shorter to create higher pitched notes, and vice versa. I'll show you on my guitar now. We're now coming down to the bridge, which the strings rest against, transferring the vibrations into the body of the instrument, causing the air inside to vibrate. The sounds bounce around in there and become louder so that all the people in the back of the theater don't complain that they can't hear anything and ask for refunds. Pause for laughter. <laughs> and eagle-eyed members of the tour will have already noticed the sound holes here. 
the vibrations as sound come out of them for all the world to hear and sometimes even enjoy. Small pause. And since you've been such a pleasure to guide, I'll throw in a couple bonus facts. If we crane our necks up like we're in the front row of a movie theater, we'll see the tuning pegs. They tighten and loosen the strings, creating higher and lower notes, respectively. Finally, if we direct our attention back to the body, we'll notice that there are several strings, some thicker than others. This allows us to play many different notes more easily, some at the same time. Other instruments can have five, six, or even 23 strings. <laughs> Looking at you, sitar. <laughs> Alrighty, that's our tour. Thank you all for coming. Remember to keep your ticket stubs. It'll get you 5% off at the gift shop. Now, bowed instruments follow these rules, but the way they make sound is pretty unique. In order to get those strings to vibrate, they use this thing here called a bow. The one half we hold is made out of wood, while the other half is made out of horse hair. Told you we'd get back there. We then slather the hair with some pine rosin, which is that ooey gooey stuff we find on trees that we can't turn into delicious syrup. <sighs> Tragic. This process allows us to drag the horse hair across the strings so they vibrate, creating a thin, smooth sound. <laughs> And these instruments range in size and sound, too. Generally, the bigger they are, the lower the notes they hit. The most well-known versions of these instruments are the ones that make up the string section of the orchestra. The upright bass, cello, viola, and violin, which, fun fact, is also known as the fiddle in some places, like Georgia the state. Other more popular examples include one of the earliest known bowed instruments, the Arabic rabab, along with the Indian and Sri Lankan ravanahata, and the Chinese arhu. We interrupt this educational content with breaking news! <laughs> Local librarian and complete music dork Joe has yet again created a video too long for general consumption. When reached for comment, this is what he had to say. Ah, so what? I get a little too excited about the content and it runs a little long. So sue me. Wait, I'm getting paid for this, right? More on this story and string instruments as the drama unfolds. In the meanwhile, for more resources, check out bcpl.info.